introduction, Professor Bauman. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today, uh, so introducing myself like a PhD candidate, third year PhD candidate at Imperial College London. And while I was doing this particular work, I was based in uh, Alan Turing Institute, which is the National Data Science for uh, National Data Science Institute in UK. And I thank my supervisor, Professor Jennifer White, for supporting the work, and also Bentley uh, Systems UK, who is co-sponsoring this research. This particular paper is uh, basically output from an exploratory study that I did to embed complex constraints into a building information model. So going into the motivations of the study, we all know that like the success of infrastructure projects depends heavily on completion on uh, uh, plan cost and time while meeting the project requirements and standards. And now we are seeing more, more of those uh, constraints on carbon footprint and uh, uh, sustainability, et cetera. But then it's a known fact that there's a lot of cost overruns and schedule delays uh, in major infrastructure projects, which you could see from around the world. I don't particularly pick a project. And the, uh, this particular problem has been researched a lot. And over the last uh, 20 plus years, uh, there was a study which looked at uh, 80, uh, 40 plus projects and documented 83 costs for it and it is ranked uh, from one to five in the table given there. We could see that most of the problems were basically because of construction management issues, which, is, which can be solved if you do our jobs better. So drawing on from that, I was looking in the, into the literature on why this particular cost uh, and schedule delays, uh, cost overruns and schedule delays happen. And I was drawn by this uh, idea of like project management 1.0 one, uh, uh, 1 and project management 2.0 were in, we are use, still using project management 1.0 in this information age, which looks at baseline scheduling and monitoring it. Whereas uh, in 2011, uh, Professor Ray Libet pro proposed a uh, project management 2.0, uh, drawing in the contributions of the technology in terms of uh, real-time sensing, et cetera, and we could go for agile project management practices as done in some of the other industries. So uh, to enable that, we need automated monitoring and control. We need to have uh, a bi-directional information flow between the construction site and office, and we need to change the way how we were structuring the data, which we have achieved to an extent using building information modeling. But then building information modeling turns out to be a big kind of a data repository in a common data environment with a lot of model-based and non-model-based uh, uh, documents uh, in the system. So interacting with the data was always a problem. And especially in terms of construction project monitoring, uh, it's a big problem because you have subcontractors, sub-trades, and there are interdisciplinary uh, uh, kind of like uh, workers uh, uh, planning project management and project engineers, et cetera, working on different sets of data and finally getting into, into a common data environment. So when I was particularly focused on this planning phase, both during the planning phase and during the look at planning uh, around uh, nearer to the construction, I could see some of those problems proposed by uh, Glenn Ballard in his uh, uh, lean construction uh, uh, kind of studies, wherein the look at scheduling is not done properly. And there is a missing link between the phase scheduling and look at scheduling. So phase scheduling is done like quite before when the project is executed, but then look at scheduling is a couple of weeks before that, uh, uh, the actual activity is to be done. And when I was sitting in those meetings uh, with the actual uh, professionals, what I found uh, was like, this process is done in a highly manual way. It requires cross-domain knowledge. It, it needs to know about the subcontractor's data. It, you need to know about the planning data. You need to know about the, how the uh, designers wanted the, uh, des uh, that particular uh, building to be, uh, building or like infrastructure to be constructed, et cetera. And there are like complex constraints uh, in between these data sets. So it's not just about uh, one data set, but the constraints are spanning on different data sets. Let's take a simple case, very simple case of a truck and entering a, a construction site. 
uh, with a module that needs to be lifted into a particular installation location. So you need to look at this uh, and then lift it into installation location, obviously. So you need to look at the kinds of like the access road requirements because of the truck that is delivering it, the uh, module weight and its correlations with the crane, and whether like the laydown area is available, the installation location is free, etc. So these are handled by different subtrades and subcontractors. So I was inspired by this case from one of my case studies wherein there was a truck delivering a component, but there was a design change in the component which changed the weight of the module to be lifted and the crane that was assigned were not used to lift the component and the project, uh, that particular activity was delayed until uh, another crane was free, which was like two to three days, not a big deal. But this is a simple example of what happens at construction site and it takes a lot of uh, 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 input from the, hum uh, like, uh, the planners and the project engineers to solve these issues. So they're literally firefighting these issues when it arises. This made me think to go back to literature and see whether other researchers have seen it. And surprise, surprise, you have already documented these kind of problems in literature, especially when they are dealing with uh, 4D planning and trying to implement automated data control to do agile project man uh, management and construction. So one of the uh, thing, um, one of the um, statements taken out of uh, uh, a paper uh, which was published in 2007. Model breakdown structure typically do not match operational details, require uh, operational de uh, uh, details, or we need to actually kind of link it through common, uh, I mean, complex uh, namespaces in the billing information model, and then further uh, divide the task into subtask, et cetera, to do this uh, uh, look at planning. And when we are doing it with one model, you might not uh, match uh, some other models from the subcontractors or even some of the data like the crane specification which the vendor is providing the subcontractor. This made me think, how can we embed this complex and dynamic scheduling constraints into a model? So this particular uh, activity of project managers or project engineers to go through all this constraint, verify it, and uh, um, tell that this activity could be done. Can we do that just like doing a clash detection, in a th uh, I mean 3D clash detection for geometric uh, constraint violations? So I was looking at that and I was looking at different technologies to enable it. I looked at uh, uh, extending IFC, I looked at uh, uh, writing APIs in Navisworks and Synchro for actually uh, looking at how to how to actually link different data sets and finally do a model check on it. Basically on these constraints on uh, uh, looking at equipment details, looking at like uh, trade relations, other relationship between the tasks and tasks, tasks and resources, resources and uh, resources, et cetera. And the output was like, uh, I found this link data approach to be the best suitable for uh, embedding these complex constraints. As I said, it was a, this was part of an exploratory study, so I haven't put in a lot of details into uh, the case as such. But introducing the linked data concept, uh, it was first, okay, there's an error here, that's Bernalsley paper 2006, uh, sorry for that. Uh, uh, but then uh, the linked data has the ability to link across domains and provide logical inferences and proof. So that is what I want particularly for my case in which you need to like link across different data sets provided by different people and then create, uh, uh, like go through those scheduling constraints and say whether the, an activity can be done or not. So link data has this uh, idea of uh, five star link data in which uh, you're publishing the data in a structured format and it is available in the web and the five star one would be ideally, it should be in a machine readable format. It should have a uniform resource identifier so you could identify that particular uh, concept or that particular uh, idea from uh, this uh, link. And also it is, it is linked with other, other kind of like domain uh, data, uh, I mean concepts and stuff uh, over the internet. 
So what happens in such a case is like you have one concept which has an ontology and a data structure, but then the schema is made public, uh, so that schema can be linked with other schemas, and finally it forms a big, big kind of a web of data and web of concepts. So you could relate one concept with the other and you could query over that. So this has been an active research field uh, in other domains and recently in the last uh, uh, eight to 10 years, I think it has come into the uh, construction uh, sector too. But most of the research was uh, what I've seen is on uh, the, uh, r uh, r uh, linking the data and the uh, mostly product uh, information. So I was uh, keen to explore how we can use this for process information. So basically, linked data is working on these uh, three boxes, predominantly on this terminology box and A box, T box and A box. So terminology box contains the concepts and uh, um, concepts of different, uh, um, uh, basically, it's like a class, properties, etc. but it's, in, it's uh, done as a graph database and in the linked data, so it is published in a structured way. You can find it online, you can query over it, and you can connect different kinds of concepts together, and this T-box forms the, all of the terminologies that we, we would be requiring in our file. A box is the class instances or like assertions of uh, the data uh, related to this T box. But what I was particularly interested was this R box because when you just have T box and A box, it follows open world assumptions. So uh, that means the statement in our data is considered as true even, though whether, even when we actually don't know whether it is true or false. So when it is unknown, it is considered as true, but that doesn't work for scheduling constraint. But then R box enables this uh, uh, closed world assumption onto this linked data concept. So I use this language called shapes constraint language. It's a data modeling language developed by W3Z working group to, for solving exactly this problem. So what it does is like uh, it validates RDF data, which is kind of like a, a way we uh, struct, uh, like represent uh, linked data. Uh, uh, and it validates that against a set of constraints uh, known as such shapes. So basically you will have like one data graph which is like your data assertions plus that uh, links to the terminology box and finally the shapes graph wherein uh, it has the constraints. So I was primarily looking at these four type of constraints, precedence constraints, discrete constraints, disjunctive constraints and logical constraints and uh, a construction site precedence is basically the time-based constraint. Discrete is when we have like resource constraints and stuff like that. Disjunctive is like when one activity could happen. Uh, when I, one acti if one activity happens, other should not happen. So it kind of deals with workspace conflicts in the uh, construction site. Logical constraints, that is when uh, something like a crane should only lift the module within the lifting capacity and stuff like that. So, it's, so these are all like uh, the main constraints that generally we deal with uh, when you are doing look at planning. So I took out a simple case where, uh, inspired from my case in the um, case study. So I took a, a, a process uh, a thing of a crane lifting a module and then um, keeping it at an installation location. And for this particular paper, I just model my own ontology, but I, uh, for the future studies I'm using IFC OWL and extending it and using process specification language for modeling. So the process has a start date and end date. It has an association with the resource. It has an association with the module. And it has some constraints like happen after for precedence and like disjunctive constraint to define like whether it uh, can happen or cannot happen. So I model this, these constraints in uh, Shackle. So what happens is you are actually inputting a, a SparkQL query into that uh, to model these constraints. So for the in the first thing, what it says is like, uh, when a process is a process uh, under the process class and it has an associated resource as a crane and it has an associated resource as module uh, and the crane has a crane capacity CC and module has a module weight MW. So the crane capacity should always be uh, uh, always be more than or equal to uh, more than uh, module weight, 
But in this particular query, what it does is like it looks through the data and filter all the values that grain capacity is less than the module weight. So that is a constraint violation. Similarly, I have modeled like different constraints uh, like precedence and uh, disjunctive in the same and discrete in the same way. And when I was uh, uh, doing this uh, uh, study, so I just inputted like some data, which this is like a made up data and so not a real case. But what you could see is like the red marking is basically the data instances of the crane. The blue one is from the module. So these are coming from uh, different uh, 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 vendors and stuff. And the process is one uh, uh, what is coming in the, uh, the planning data. And the output was, it was able to uh, get the disjunctive and discrete and all these constraint violations uh, very easily and in a short amount of time. Because this was a small data set, it was like a couple of milliseconds. So this was what I uh, got as an output. And now what I'm working on is on a prototype to actually generate these shackle queries automatically from um, uh, basically the planning data and a little bit of extra input from the look at plan, uh, the construction profile during the look at planning. So basic conclusion, this is a novel method to define construction scheduling constraint unlike the usual scheduling softwares which looks, which doesn't look at these uh, uh, relationship between the constraints uh, and the resources and the tasks. It has demonstrated the capability of linked data to actually traverse through different sets of data and provide inferences and may, uh, detect constraint violations using that. Um, and also the capability of uh, using this uh, linked data for process modeling too. So that's with the presentation. I would just like to say a few words uh, about this new workshop that uh, Center for Systems Engineering and Innovation is holding next year. So we are looking at an international workshop on systems engineering and innovation and in infrastructure. Uh, it's gonna be a small workshop, uh, going to happen early uh, July next year. And we would be putting out call for papers soon at our website. So all of you are welcome to submit a paper to it. And it's gonna be, a, we're hoping it to be a great workshop next year. Thank you very much.